ओके हाय हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन ऑन द रिकॉल क्वेश्चंस ऑफ एफएमजी फॉरेन मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट एग्जामिनेशन दैट टुक प्लेस ऑन डिसेंबर 2021 इन डिसेंबर 2021 आई एम डॉक्टर शिवांगी शुक्ला your educator for ophthalmology here on ADR plexus i welcome all of you tonight's session is going to be an interactive one and uh, we are going to discuss not just the mcqs not just the correct answers of the mcqs rather we are going to focus on each and every option that was given in the question and we are going to uh, make sure we are going to understand how the uh, questions are how the options are eliminated all right so we are going to develop this skill of elimination as well as focusing on each and every option as and when um, uh, we take the exam so that we don't just hop on to the first option that appears to be correct rather we develop an analytical skill okay all right so let's begin so uh, the first question that i have put up is the visual acuity improves upon looking through a pin hole so here they are asking about a particular disease that uh, in which the visual acuity improves upon looking through a pin hole now what is this particular disease is it a macular lesion a refractive error an organic lesion or can it be cataract now what is a pin hole for understanding this let us first look at what a pin hole is so this is a pin hole all of you most of you would have uh, come across this in your third year you would have seen this now a pin hole is an instrument which has um this pin hole it has a small opening a small hole as the name suggests this hole is around 0.75 millimeters to 1.25 millimeters in diameter okay so small okay it is a very very small opening through which a very small beam of light can only pass okay now what happens is see now what happens is if you have this opening if you have this beam so uh, this is the okay this is the cornea and through this the light will pass on and fall onto the retina here okay now suppose there is a wide beam of light that is following falling okay this is a very wide beam of light that is falling on the cornea and it is getting refracted now it will get refracted uh, through various angles and it will fall on different parts of the retina okay it can fall on a wide area of the retina okay so it undergoes what it undergoes diffraction also what is diffraction diffraction is bending of light rays about the edges okay so this diffraction is going to cause a lot of confusion okay now what happens is if you introduce a pin hole here this pin hole is only going to allow a very narrow beam of light to pass through and this beam of light cannot undergo diffraction diffraction okay so what happens is so what will this eliminate this will eliminate a refractive error now any macular lesion any macular lesion will be worsened upon looking through a pin hole why is it so now it is very very obvious see this is the eye okay now if you allow and macula is the seeing area okay macula is the seeing area of the eye now if you allow just a narrow beam of light to fall through it will definitely it will directly fall on to the macula and if the macula is not functioning properly in a macular lesion be it due to armd due to um, cme cystoid macular edema or whatever then what happens is only this beam of light is falling on the macula and the other areas of the retina are not getting stimulated so the the this lesion this uh, object will not be perceived only so macular lesions are worsened through a pin hole refractive error is improved through a pin hole because the uh, sorry because the diffraction is 
removed okay uh, and uh, what happens with the organic lesion there will be no change in the organic lesion because it will persist with or without a pinhole similar will be with cataract okay the psc that is the posterior subcapsular cataract is also going to be worsened through a pinhole because of the similar mechanism as a macular lesion okay so the correct answer is what refractive error i hope all of you have understood this okay now the next question a patient presents with congestion itching foreign body sensation in the eye okay now these are the important these are the symptoms look at them congestion itching foreign body sensation all of these point towards some conjunctival pathology okay why not a corneal pathology because what what are the different uh, pathologies in what are the different symptoms of a corneal pathology pain photophobia lacrimation blurred vision these will be present in a corneal pathology okay vision will be affected here none, nothing about vision has been written now he also gives a history of use of contact lens it is the clinching hint in the in the question okay what is the most probable diagnosis vernal keratoconjunctivitis giant papillary conjunctivitis corneal abrasion or acanthamoeba keratitis now because there hasn't been any corneal symptom that has been mentioned like pain photophobia lacrimation or blurred vision we can eliminate corneal abrasion we can eliminate acanthamoeba keratitis but can you see how very interestingly they have mentioned acanthamoeba keratitis why have they mentioned this because to confuse you with contact lens acanthamoeba keratitis is very very commonly experienced in contact lens users isn't it and how is it experienced in contact lens users because of proteinaceous deposits what do we do we usually there there are a lot of deposits uh, that occur on the um contact lens as we use it okay so for removing these deposits we have to use the lens solution okay but what what do we do sometimes we are very loath to use the lens solution or sometimes what happens is we are on the go and we do, the lens solution is not available to us so what do people do they use tap water and in the tap water there are free living amoebae that are acanthamoeba especially in the west okay and those acanthamoeba can cause keratitis in contact lens users okay so acanthamoeba keratitis i'll tell you the features of acanthamoeba keratitis uh, revise it with me acanthamoeba keratitis usually spreads along the nerves of the cornea so what is it called radial neuritis okay see the cornea corneal nerves are arranged radially like this okay so the acanthamoeba keratitis also it spreads like this therefore it causes it um, produces a radial neuritis thickening of the radial nerves and exudation okay got it how will you remember this the acanthamoeba is a free living free floating amoeba okay so it is floating around like this so radial neuritis is most commonly associated with this floating amoeba that is acanthamoeba imagine this as a floating amoeba okay and there will be a ring ulcer okay a ring ulcer also is very commonly seen with acanthamoeba keratitis it is also seen with fungal keratitis okay now coming back to our question what is this so we have eliminated corneal abrasion corneal abrasion will be uh, some uh, defect in the epithelium and the upper layers of the stroma so this is also not so because it will produce a lot of pain the patient will not be able to open his eyes okay now another thing be it can either be a or b most of you would have been confused between these two only i know 
okay so how will you eliminate how will you decide what is the correct answer because of this clinching hint they have mentioned this only to guide you to the correct answer contact lens use is associated with giant papillary conjunctivitis the correct answer is giant papillary conjunctivitis and why is it so because the contact lens what does it do contact lens will irritate the fornicial conjunctiva and the uh, palpebral conjunctiva and it will cause the formation of giant papillae what are these giant papillae see papillae can either be micro micro means less than 0.3 mm in size or macro between 0.3 and 0.5 not very um, essential to remember this just for your understanding now another very important term is the cobblestone papillae what are the cobblestone papillae you would have seen the cobblestones that are present on the on the side of the footpath okay the cobblestones are like this on the sides of the footpath okay cobbled streets so these are also these these are large papillae that occur on the lids on the under surface of the lids on the palpebral surface of the conjunctiva okay these are around 0.5 to 1 mm big in diameter now something even larger than these are the giant papillae okay giant papillae and these are characteristically seen in contact lens users okay understood now the cobblestone pathway you will see you will ask me where is cobblestone pa papilla seen these are seen in vernal keratoconjunctivitis okay a severe form of vernal keratoconjunctivitis can also have giant papillae okay but giant papillary conjunctivitis associated mm -hmm. is usually not associated with allergies it is associated with irritation due to soft contact lens okay soft contact lens causes allergies in the giant papillary conjunctivitis okay got it hmm? and uh, so this is how you eliminate also one very very important thing is that no seasonal history is given okay usually for questions uh, regarding vernal keratoconjunctivitis what do you get you get seasonal history that uh, especially typically a small boy because it is more common in males small boy will experience those symptoms okay so vernal keratoconjunctivitis will not be correct here rather it will be giant papillary conjunctivitis now there have been a uh, few students who have uh, told uh, in the recall that there was another question on ver vernal keratoconjunctivitis that we are going to come to later on okay for this you should know what you should just remember uh, that cobblestone papillae are smaller than giant papillae how will you remember there is a huge giant who is walking around the uh, along the um, footpath on the cobblestone okay the cobblestone is smaller than the feet of the giant so this is how you remember that giant papillae are larger than cobblestone and giant papillae are associated with Uh, contact lens use okay now uh next question this is a relatively easy question not because the question is easy but because the options are very easy okay what is the most common cause of blindness in children is it cataract glaucoma vitamin a deficiency or corneal opacity now for those of you who have used your common sense which i hope most of you have can you see the question asks most common cause of blindness in children and cataract glaucoma both of these i think you can easily eliminate because yeah barring congenital glaucoma barring congenital cataract most of the forms are not common in children okay and congenital glaucoma and congenital cataract themselves are not that common okay so what do you what do you say a and b we can eliminate easily isn't it then comes corneal opacity corneal opacity uh, per se in children can be mostly by how due to uh, congenital glaucoma 
or due to peter's anomaly okay involving the cornea per se but that is also not as common as vitamin a deficiency so what is the correct answer vitamin a deficiency okay and why is it so how does vitamin a deficiency occur in children it is a sequelae of which disease can any of you tell me can any of you guess it is the sequelae of you should men you should mention in the comment section okay while you are um uh, studying this you should also talk to yourself and before i before i mention the answer you should be up, up and about with the answer yourself okay got it so vitamin a deficiency is the sequelae of measles okay got it and vitamin a deficiency has a spectrum in the in children it starts with um, conjunctival xerosis it then it starts with bite out spots then causes conjunctival xerosis then it leads to corneal xerosis then corneal ulceration and then it leads to uh, xerophthalmic fundus xerophthalmic scarring okay night blindness is also one of the forms of vitamin a deficiency got it and uh, uh, what is the definition of blindness given by who who has defined blindness as less than 3 by 60 vision visual acuity less than 3 by 60 in the better eye okay so this is the definition given by who for blindness okay just some additional tidbit that you should know from community ophthalmology next there's one instrument there have been a lot of pictorial questions given okay so we'll also include a lot of pictures while we are um, learning okay and i'll make a lot of diagrams also for you to understand next where is the following instrument used i'll show you the instrument that was asked something along the lines of this instrument now can you see this is a this is a um, simple question i think most of you would be knowing this is it an e nucleation e nucleation means removal of the whole eyeball is it in dacryocystorhinostomy what is this this is such a uh, difficult sounding term isn't it i could not even pronounce it in one breath dacryocystorhinostomy what does this mean dacryocyst what is the dacryocyst this is the lacrimal sac okay rhino what is rhino it is related to the nose ostomy what is ostomy ostomy means an opening so what is this it is an opening between the lacrimal sac and the nose okay this is a surgery which introduces an opening between the lacrimal sac and the nose now you will say what is the lacrimal sac okay i'll show this to you in the diagram okay i'll make a diagram and then i'll show it to you evisceration what is evisceration it is scooping out the contents of the eye removing the sclera intact sclera and the eye extraocular muscles okay pterygium pterygium surgery <clears throat> well pterygium is not a surgery <laughs> where is the following instrument used it should i should have framed this option better in pterygium surgery pterygium extraction but anyway so this cannot be used in pterygium surgery if it is if it if this is used in pterygium surgery then lord save that eye anyway so this is what this is a bone punch okay it is a bone punch it is used to create a hole in the bone just like you punch punch the paper and create a small round hole in the paper similarly this bone punch introduces a small hole inside the bone okay now this area you see this area is where you hold the plate of bone like this and it and you press these two together okay you bring these together like this okay mm -hmm. now there will be a hole a small hole in this bone like this 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 thing will be chipped off from the bone <clears throat> got it so ostomy ostomy is creating a hole this instrument is used to create the hole okay how does it do that i'll show you okay suppose this is the eye this is another eye and this thing is the nose okay now you have the lower puncta the upper puncta 
through which comes the lower canaliculi the upper canaliculi this is the lower puncta this is the upper puncta in the lid okay this is the lacrimal gland here they secrete the uh, tear okay the tear secretion via these ducts now this puncta will have the upper canaliculus this will have the lower canaliculus joining together meeting to form the common canaliculus then this common canaliculus is going to meet the lacrimal sac and this is going to form the nasolacrimal duct which opens where it opens in the inferior meatus okay it opens where in the inferior meatus all right how will you remember this whenever you cry the tear, the there is secretion of some liquid uh, liquid secretion comes out just through the bottom of your nose so tears normally flow through the bottom to the bottom of the nose to the inferior of the nose that is the inferior meatus normally but what happens is the most common site of obstruction here in this system is this nasolacrimal duct it can be obstructed okay what else can be obstructed the common canaliculi can be obstructed here what else can be obstructed the lower canaliculus can be obstructed what else the upper canaliculus can be obstructed what else the puncta can be blocked both the puncta got it so these are the various levels of blocks that can cause excessive tearing or lacrimation because the tears will be poured in from the lacrimal gland and they cannot be secreted easily they will be blocked at some point so they will be overflowing from the eye got it so the most common uh, location of block is the nasolacrimal duct here that is called nasolacrimal duct obstruction okay mm -hmm. now now you will ask what is the need for surgery the need for surgery is the patient's discomfort if the patient is experiencing a lot of tearing or because it is obstructed then the tear collected here in the lacrimal sac and, and they will be frequently time and again the sac will get infected it can lead to formation of pyocele in the sac mucocele and that is going to cause a lot of problems okay frequent infection is going to cause swelling it can it can uh, you know by backflow it can cause infection in the conjunctiva also so mm -hmm. all these things are going to cause a lot of problem now so that is the indication for surgery now what do you do in surgery you connect this lacrimal sac which is a very wide diametered sac with the the middle meatus here okay so you remove a piece of the nasal bone what is chipped off extremely important question this can be asked in the mcqs the nasal bone is chipped off through the bone punch okay so the bone punch removes a piece of the nasal bone and what happens is this lacrimal sac a flap is created and lacrimal sac is joined with the uh, lateral mm -hmm. lateral surface of the middle meatus okay middle meatus all right now how will you remember this how will you remember which meatus is uh, is it joined after surgery and uh, which meatus does it open naturally see you can visualize that this lacrimal sac has to be connected to one meatus it is not that big enough that it can be pulled down till the inferior meatus okay so this is another way in which you can remember that this is attached to the middle meatus because middle meatus is slightly above and slightly nearer to the lacrimal sac okay whereas the inferior meatus is very inferior and this cannot be pulled down till the inferior meatus so always remember these are the uh, points which you should remember you can be quizzed on this in the next uh, question in the next exam okay so that is why i told you do not just focus on getting the questions correct in this uh, quiz rather you should focus on each and every option and you should focus on the understanding part as well so got this next the parents of a child complain that he squeezes the eyes while watching tv what is the most probable diagnosis 
Now, this is similar to the first question which we discussed. Squeezing the eyes. Squeezing the eyes will make the eyes what? Squeezing the eyes will eliminate the scattering of light. Okay, I'm squeezing the eyes. Just a very small beam is now allowed to pass through my pupil. Okay, now a very small beam of light is uh, allowed to pass. So what, what has my eye become? My eye will now function as a pinhole. Isn't it? Got it? So what, what happens is, what is the correct answer here? It is myopia. Okay. Now what will people do for, with dry eyes? What will happen? Nothing will happen in dry eyes. Uh, what will people do mostly is they will try and blink the eyes a lot of times. Why? So that the whatever tear film is there, it gets dispersed evenly. Because people will with dry eyes have unstable tear films. Okay. So they want the tear film to disperse evenly so that a clear image is formed. That is why they will blink a lot of times. So if you have a question where they ask a person, a parents of the parents of a child complain that the person blinks frequently and experiences eye pain, burning in the eye. Then what is the most probable diagno diagnosis? Dry eyes. Got it? For myopia, the, the child will squeeze his eyes like this. Okay. Hypermetropia, what will happen? First of all, this also you should know that uh, for, uh, yeah, for hypermetropia, what happens? Usually, the, uh, they will say for, they will, they uh, put the uh, book or they put the mobile to a distance for, while reading. Okay, this can be one of the uh, complaints. Okay, and for an old man or for an old person, what will they say? That they try and move their spectacles uh, lower down the bridge of the nose while reading. So that the focal length is adjusted and the image falls on the retina. Okay, so these are the ways in which a hypermetropic person or a press biopic person will behave. And glaucoma. Glaucoma, squeezing the eyes will have no effect while uh, in a glaucomatous person. Okay. Glaucoma may they'll give you history of pain, pain around the temples, watering, all these things. Okay. Understood. And especially a child with glaucoma, they will give complaints like what, what is the uh, triad of bufthalmos? Bufthalmos is associated with congenital glaucoma. The triad is B, P, L. What is this triad? Photophobia. Lacrimation. And blepharospasm. So this, these complaints will be given in congenital glaucoma or bufthalmos. Got it? So here squeezing the eye means he's converting the eye into a pinhole, similar to the first question. So all the diffracted rays will be eliminated and just one thin beam will fall on the retina and the refractive error will be eliminated. Okay, next question. Which of the following will be observed when a person enters a dark theater? A person enters a dark theater, okay, dark adaptation. What is happening? Pupillary constriction. Will this be there? Pupil will dilate, not constrict inside in, in a dark area. So this is wrong. Convergence. Convergence is part of the accommodation reflex, isn't it? Convergence, uh, pupillary constriction. All these are part of the accommodation reflex. So convergence will, will also not occur. Next, conversion of Levinsis retinal and conversion of all trans retinal. Now, to understand this, I'll tell you the um, one important mnemonic for understanding the vitamin A cycle. Okay. This is what? There is a sandwich of retinol, retinol, retinal and retinal. How is it? See. First, you write retinol. Then you write retinol. Then you write retinal. And you write again retinal. So, this retinal and retinol, they are the bread of, of the sandwich. 
and this retinol and retinol both both of these are the fillings okay so this is what all trans and this is all trans okay and the filling the filling has suppose toothpicks usually they put in toothpicks right so these are the toothpicks 11 cis and 11 cis okay so uh, bahar mein kya hai on the outside they have retinol retinol okay and after that they have retinyl retinyl okay o o and a a and the sand, the bread is what the bread is all trans all trans and the filling is with the toothpick what is the filling 11 cis 11 cis so you should remember this sandwich always remember this sandwich and then you will be able to solve any question that comes on the visual cycle so what happens is in the eye in the retina uh vitamin a exists in a lot of forms okay retinoic acid retinol retinal dehyde retinal is what retinal dehyde okay now this uh, retinol all trans retinol is converted to 11 cis retinol which gets converted to 11 cis retinal and this is the form which combines with opsin to form what rhodopsin okay this is rhodopsin now what happens on this whenever dim light falls when dim light will fall this opsin will separate from 11 cis retinal okay and opsin will undergo a lot of conformational changes photorhodop photorhodopsin uh, uh no sorry this rhodopsin will change into photorhodopsin bathorhodopsin metarhodopsin lumirhodopsin and then finally the opsin will separate and it will be recycled and what we will form all trans retinal so in fact this 11 cis retinal has transformed to all trans retinal and opsin has undergone a lot of changes okay and now this all trans retinal will form all trans retinol and the cycle will continue okay. understood got it all of you what happens so always remember this sandwich you will be able to solve any question so what is happening this is the part where rhodopsin is there and what is happening when dim light falls on this when low light falls on this during dark adaptation this is going to convert into this the filling is going to convert into the lower bread of the sandwich always remember this is a sandwich four layered sandwich retinol retinol retinal retinal all all 11 11 got it understood so now you tell me the answer when dark when when he enters the dark theater dark adaptation will start what will happen conversion of 11 cis retinal will happen got it understood why always remember this okay always remember this uh, cycle this sandwich always remember is very important okay any doubt then uh, otherwise i'll move on now a young boy presents with itching photophobia irritation and redness of the eyes every year during the summers now now we are talking isn't it now you your favorite option is going to be the answer that is vernal keratoconjunctivitis vernal vernal usually means spring it is also called spring catarrh but it usually occurs in the summers okay got it vernal keratoconjunctivitis what are the different findings present in vernal keratoconjunctivitis can you tell me what happens uh, it occurs around the limbus small white spots occur around the limbus containing allergic bodies containing mast cells and all so what are these what are these spots occurring around the limbus these are 
कॉर्नर ट्रांटास स्पॉट्स गॉटेड कॉर्नर ट्रांटास स्पॉट्स वॉट एल्स कैन बी देर ऑन द अंडर साइड ऑफ द लिड दिस इज द लिड ऑन द अंडर साइड ऑन द पैपिलरी सर्फिस ऑन द पैलपेबरल सर्फिस फेसिंग द द बल्ब देर विल बी पैपिले what what type of papillae we just discussed on which the giant walks the giant walks on the cobblestone there will be cobblestone papillae the giant is walking on the cobblestone on a summer uh, evening so cobblestone papillae okay got it then there will be pigmentation on the sclera and the conjunctiva so muddy sclera okay understood and if this if this uh, becomes very severe what will happen there will be development of vessels inside the cornea the cornea will seem to look like the conjunctiva the conjunctiva has a lot of blood supply here see the, isn't the cornea mm -hmm. looking very angry the cornea is very angry here why because it is not getting the Uh, uh it is not getting a good tear cover okay so the, so the cornea has become very angry like this so this angry cornea is what conjunctivalization of cornea okay conjunctivalization means development of vessels blood vessels so these are all the features of vkc or vernal crato conjunctivitis okay next a patient presents with blunt trauma to the eye what type of cataract may be seen in this patient okay blunt trauma post traumatic cataract can be so this is this question wants to ask of you what is the type of post traumatic cataract that you know sunflower cataract is seen in wilson's disease it is seen in wilson's disease that is increased copper serum copper posterior subcapsular cataract this can occur in trauma this can occur in a lot of conditions it can also occur in trauma zonular cataract it occurs it occurs due to it is also called a developmental cataract when one of the zonules of the lens see this is the so when when one of the layers of the lens gets cataractus okay so this is what this is the zonular cataract if during development at one stage there is some kind of insult some kind of nutritional loss some kind of disease whatever at that time the lens will be diseased the lens will get hydrated and that only that zonule only that a layer of the lens will get affected okay and that is called developmental cataract or zonular cataract okay the correct answer here is that is most commonly associated with trauma is rosette cataract rosette means looking like a rose okay how does it look like this the rosette cataract okay now where how does it form the mechanism of injury is coup contre coup injury what is this coup contre coup injury suppose a person has been hit by the fist okay on the eye now what happens suppose this is the lens okay this is the lens now when the person is hit what happens the there is the coup injury coup injury will cause what coup injury will cause the clear will cause direct force on the lens what will happen the the iris that is here is going to touch the lens and come back because the iris is also going to be affected by the who force like this okay so it is going to touch the lens and then it is going to come back so touching the lens will create will deposit some of the pigments of the iris here on the lens so what will happen 
this is the lens and it has some pigments of iris deposited here in a ring shaped manner what is this called this is called the washier's ring it's called the washier's ring okay washier's ring is due to the coup force when the when the there is a blunt trauma on the eye the coup force will cause the coup means the direct force it will cause the washier's mm -hmm. ring because of the touching of the iris on the anterior capsule of the lens now when this iris goes back now what happens is the contents of the eyes which were pushed uh, backward they will now recover so that recovery force is the contre coup force it will be in this direction okay it will be in this direction now you can imagine a sphere where if you kick the sphere like this all the water all the contents inside this will move towards this side and then it will push this like this to expand now if this does not burst it will then recoil and there is another recoil force in the backward direction similarly the eyeball will recoil and the force will be in this direction so this force that is coming from the recoil is going to create a cataract here on the posterior surface of the lens the lens fibers on the posterior surface are going to get disrupted and there will be hydration of the lens fibers here which is going to cause rosette cataract so this is the mechanism development of rosette cataract got it understood next an a one year old child presents with the following picture intraocular calcification is also observed what is the most likely cause hmm. so this is the picture can you see he has a white reflex here in one eye what is this reflex called white means leuco white pupil okay this pupil is appearing white what is pupil called corea this is leucocorea okay so what is leucocorea can be it can be in coats disease also it can be present in congenital cataract also it can be present in mucopolysaccharidosis also it can be present in retinoblastoma also it can be present in um, toxocariasis also that occurs due to dog okay toxoplasmosis due to it is carried by cats toxocariasis by dogs but the clinching hint here is intraocular calcification very very characteristically associated with retinoblastoma okay so this is retinoblastoma all right now uh, retinoblastoma is unilateral in two thirds cases two thirds two third cases are unilateral one third are bilateral what is trilateral retinoblastoma one uh, trivia for you it is bilateral retinoblastoma plus a pinealoblastoma okay by uh, bilateral retinoblastoma plus a pinealoblastoma that is a, the pineal gland is also affected what is the pineal gland it is characteristically situated near the glabella here okay so it seems like all the three eyes are affected okay so this is called trilateral retinoblastoma what are the different types of rosettes observed here homer writes rosettes flexner winter steiner rosettes and fluorets okay these are the three uh rosettes that are observed here okay understood 
Now we'll move to the next question. A farmer presents with pain, watering and photophobia in the eye for 36 hours. A farmer, so associated with vegetative matter, pain, watering, photophobia. What did I tell you? Pain, lacrimation, photophobia, blurred vision. What are these symptoms of? Cornea. Whenever you hear of this, you should, your mind should go towards cornea. Some corneal pathology for sure. Okay. Now it is, it is itself saying, the question is saying 2 into 2 centimeter ulcer is there. Now you have to identify the lesion that is marked with the arrow. Now the arrow was placed somewhere like this here. Okay. So you had to tell what these lesions are. What are these? Can you see? This is the, this is one big ring around which these are roaming like satellites, isn't it? What is this? This is the satellite lesion, like satellite lesion of fungal ulcer. Okay, now we'll quickly discuss the properties of fungal ulcer. Okay, fungal ulcers, signs more than symptoms. Always remember vegetative matter. Something like vegetative matter will be mentioned, trauma. Okay, signs will be more than symptoms. Then what else? Hypopion will be immobile. Why? Because it has, it is held together by hyphae. Okay, understood? And hypopion is unsterile. Hypopion is unsterile because it has fungal elements, hyphae. Now, how do you remember about the satellite lesions? Fungi is what? Fungi. He is a very fun guy. He likes to have fun. Okay, this fungi likes to have a lot of fun. So, he keeps on hopping from one place to the other. And he has to be held in position by ropes, which are hyphae. Okay, so these hyphae will be present in the hypopion, causing it to be immobile. And because the fun guy is a very fun, fun guy, so it is going to hop around from one place to the other, leading to the formation of what? Satellite lesions. Understood? Next. Uh, next, a hypertensive patient presents with sudden, sorry, a hypertensive patient presents with sudden painless loss of vision. On examination, his visual acuity is hand movement close to face. That means drastically reduced, suddenly painless loss of drastic, enormous loss of vision and relative afferent pupillary defect is present. Something related to the optic nerve also. Now, fundus examination shows the following picture. What is this? What is this? Favorite of all examiners. This is the cherry red spot. The cherry red spot. Okay. Now, where is the cherry red spot seen? It is seen in a lot of conditions. But out of the options given, it is seen in arterial occlusion. So, it is C-R-A-O. Why does the cherry red spot form? I'll tell you. Okay. The internal carotid artery. It will give off the, it will form the ophthalmic artery. And the ophthalmic artery is going to form the central retinal artery. And also it will give the short posterior ciliary artery. Okay, short, how will you remember short? Because they are short. Why? Because they have to be present only at the posterior pole. So the short posterior ciliary artery is present at the posterior pole here. The long one presence it goes to the anterior end okay so the short posterior ciliary artery is going to give a cilio retinal artery the cilio retinal artery is going to supply the macula in almost 10 percent of the population the world over in just 10 percent individuals the cilio retinal artery will be there okay cilio retinal artery Okay, it is sealed. The cilio retinal artery is sealed in maximum people, but it opens in 
just 10% of the people. Celio retinal is sealed normally. It opens in just 10% of the people. It, that means it supplies the macula additionally in just 10% of the people. Otherwise, the supply of the macula is through the CRAOs, CRA, the central retinal artery. Okay. Now, what happens is when there is occlusion of the central retinal artery, this, the retinal nerve cell layer and the ganglion cell layer, both of these layers become, they have, they have lost their blood supply. So, the nerves become dead. Okay. The retinal nerve cell layer. Retinal nerve fiber layer and the ganglion cell layer, both of these have lost their vascular supply, so they become dead. There is ischemia and there is loss of flow of axoplasm because of ischemia. Okay, so what happens is they become white and opaque. Okay, but just at the fovea, just at the fovea, what happens is this, the uh, uh, RNFL and the GCC are very thin. Okay, it is just one layer thin. So, therefore, the choroidal uh, vasculature shines through the fovea, fovea. Okay, the choroidal vasculature here, it shines through the fovea, whereas the nearby macular area is opaque and whitish, pale. So, this area is whitish, pale and this just here beneath the fovea, the choroidal vasculature shines through. Understood? Now, if the celioretinal artery is functional, in some patients, the celioretinal artery is functional. It is not sealed. So, what happens is the papillomacular bundle, this is the macula, this is the papilla, papilla means the disc, the papillomacular bundle is supplied by the celioretinal artery and this area is also not pale and vision will be salvaged. Vision will be left in these patients. Okay. So, even after uh, CRAO, if the patient is able to see, that means he has supply by celioretinal artery. Additional supply by celioretinal artery. Understood? Next, biconcave lenses are used in extremely easy concave lenses, myopia. Convex lenses, hypermetropia. Why? Myopia means what? That they, uh, this person is convert. This person is converging more than he should. The the converging power is more. It needs to be reduced. That is why minus lenses are given. Concave lenses are given. Hypermetropia. The converging power is not much. So, additional converging power in the form of plus or convex lenses have to be given. Okay, astigmatism means along a particular meridian, the converging power is different, is inadequate or it can be high. So, here cylindrical correction is given just along a particular meridian. Press biopia means press biopia is loss of near vision. That means loss of convergence power, loss of uh, um, accommodation of the lens with age because of loss of um, function of ciliary muscles. The ciliary muscles cannot function that adequately, okay, that efficiently. So here in press biopia also plus correction is given. That means you have to increase the converging power of the eye here, okay. Hypermetropia and press biopia are not synonymous. Please keep this in mind. Next, a child presents with defective vision which does not improve with glasses. The fundus is normal. What does this indicate? There is no organic pathology. The vision does not improve with glasses. That means there is no refractive pathology. There is no organic pathology. The eye is totally normal and there is no improvement with refraction also. How do you confirm no improvement with refraction? Through a pinhole. If you, if you apply the pinhole, then if there is a refractive error, it should improve, but it is not improving. That means there is no improvement in refraction. The fundus is also normal. There is no obvious organic pathology. So what is the diagnosis? Myopia should improve with glasses. Hypermetropia should improve with glasses. Astigmatism should improve with glasses. They are all refractive errors. 
they should improve with glasses so the pathology is amblyopia amblyopia is diminution of vision in the absence of any organic pathology okay understood now identify the condition depicted here another easy question here what do you see inward turning of the lid margin in turning of the lid margin is in in means entropion the lid margin is interned you cannot see the lid margin here can you see the lid margin you can see the top the upper lid margin you can see here the inner lid margin the outer margin the gray line in between but you cannot appreciate the lower lid margin because it has turned inside inside means entropion outside means outside ectoderm ectoderm is outside so ectropion will be it will turn outside what is dystichiasis dystichiasis is an additional layer of um, um eyelashes present okay normally around 1 to 2 layers of eyelashes are there but if an additional layer of eyelash is present it is called dystichiasis what is trichiasis trichiasis is misdirection of eyelashes okay when the eyelashes are misdirected you they will uh, turn and they will rub on the cornea so here also the eyelashes are misdirected everyone will say that but what is the pathology of misdirection it is due to entropion had this entropion not been there this trichiasis would not have been there sometimes even without entropion trichiasis does occur at that time your diagnosis will be solely trichiasis okay so here if one of the options would have been entropion with trichiasis that would have been the best option okay but the main primary pathology here is entropion so you should go with that one okay now a patient presents with paralysis of all extraocular muscles the most probable site of the lesion is now for this this also you have to mark the most correct option okay the most correct option because none of this is totally correct what are the extraocular muscles 3 4 and 6 okay i'll tell you a mnemonic to remember okay the the brain stem that is mid brain pons and medulla okay how are the cranial nerves present the roots of the cranial nerves the nuclei 1 2 3 4 the first four cranial nerves originate from the mid brain 5 6 7 8 originate from the pons 9 10 11 and 12 originate from the medulla okay so now this is saying all the extraocular muscles are paralyzed the extraocular muscles are supplied by 3 4 and 6 so all are paralyzed that means at least two originate from mid brain and one originates from the pons okay so the most correct option will be mid brain because 3 and 4 will originate from the mid brain so most of that 6 will supply lr6 right lr6 6 supplies the lateral rectus most of the muscles are supplied by 3 and so4 four supplies the trochlear supplies the superior oblique the rest are supplied by <coughs> oculomotor this abducens supplies the lateral rectus okay so had the option been brain stem which includes all the three then that would have been the most correct answer otherwise here the most correct answer is mid brain understood so remember this mnemonic all right 1 2 3 4 1 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay next the last question a patient presents with a difference in visual acuity between the two eyes what can be the cause okay difference in visual acuity between the two eyes can see refractive error can be there and isometria metropia is also a type of refractive error where the difference between the refractive error is more than 2.5 between the two eyes 2.5 diopters but here what is this asking this refractive error can be cured by uh, using spectacles okay conjunctivitis does not affect the vision okay any conjunctival pathology does not affect the vision hardly it it does not affect the vision only the tear film instability can temporarily affect but it does not affect the visual acuity as such 
so in spite of the refractive error and anisometropia using the glasses can cure this but if the visual acuity difference is persistent that is because of amblyopia okay the difference in visual acuity if not cured before the age of 8 years is going to lead to an isometropic amblyopia amblyopia can be of different types strabismic amblyopia uh, stimulation deficient uh, deficit amblyopia and isometropic amblyopia a lot of types so these can be understood why this is not the correct answer because these can be corrected but amblyopia is the reason why this difference in visual acuity will be persistent okay also you could have eliminated these two options why because anisometropia and refractive error both are the subsets of one whole individual set only anisometropia is also a type of refractive error only okay so there is not one best answer among these two so you should go with amblyopia what is amblyopia loss of vision in spite of any visual any organic pathology okay and how is amblyopia occurring here because of an and isometropia okay that is difference of more than 2.5 diopters between the two eyes so what happens one eye is continuously suppressed but the image from one eye is more blurred compared to the other eye so so the blurred image is continuously suppressed by the brain and the clear image the brain is favoring so the brain is biased towards the good eye and the other eye becomes very lazy okay then the other eye is so lazy that it is it is saying all right then i'm going to revolt okay if you are not going to accept my image then i'm going to revolt okay then then i am not going to see further okay and its vision keeps on deteriorating okay so how what is the treatment for amblyopia you are going to pamper the lazy eye okay what will you do all right if the brain is not favoring the lazy eye let the doctor do what will the doctor do the doctor is going to patch the good eye okay the doctor will patch the good eye so now the brain has become so selfish what will the brain do the brain will say okay now i have lost that good image now i will turn towards the lazy one and i will say okay okay now please you only show your image and that that lazy eye will now give its blurred image to the brain and then because of continuously working and practicing that lazy eye will also improve its vision so what is the treatment of amblyopia it is patching the good eye okay at for small intervals not for long otherwise that good eye will then become lazy okay understood so these were all the questions i hope you have had fun in tonight's session and we'll meet with another such such session on um, a different occasion and please go back and revise and please develop this method of uh, understanding each and every option and eliminating it okay because the options are some, sometimes what happens is we have seen in a lot of questions there has not been any one good option any one totally correct option similarly in a lot of questions there have been more than two correct answers so we have to eliminate options here this is the go to method in mcqs all right okay then bye bye guys thank you